Blessings, brothers and sisters, I hope you're fine. You're seeing now an interview that I did with Terry. Terry is a very good friend of mine from the States. He's a street preacher, and I think he's doing a pretty good job. He's standing before the temples of heretics like Kenneth Copeland, Todd White, Creflo Dollar, all these greedy wolves in sheep's clothing. And we were talking about predator pastors, Jezebels, and the lukewarm church. Now I'm going to show you a couple of scenes of what he's doing. I'm going to show you his channel, and after that, enjoy the interview. Be richly blessed in Jesus Christ's mighty name. All right, this is Terry's channel. It's called A Messenger, and you find plenty of good videos there. Just check it out. And now I'm going to show you a couple of scenes of what he is doing, giving people the true gospel and rebuking the wicked. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, Do not store up treasure on earth, where moth and rust destroys and where thieves break in and steal. Those are the words of Jesus, but these men don't like those words. Money! Come on to me! The Lord Jesus Christ. He said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Treasures in heaven. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. Not on this earth. These men are laying up for themselves treasures on this earth. And they're not even working with their hands. They're taking their money from the sick, from the poor, from the broken, from the weak, from the elderly. Jesus said not to store up treasure on earth. And that's precisely what these wicked, ravenous wolves are doing. They are laying up for themselves treasures on this earth. Jesus said, do not, do not lay up treasure on this earth, Creflo Dollar. Do not lay up treasure on earth, Kenneth Copeland. Do not do this. That is the words of Jesus, but these men don't like that, Jesus. Money! Come on to me! The Lord Jesus Christ. They don't like the Jesus of the Bible. They say treasure is good, greed is good. Why are you out here today protesting uh, the pro-choice? You know, we wanted to come here as a resistance in support of the unborn. So we're, we're actually here defending those that don't have a voice, those in their mommy's bellies those that are being murdered. So we wanted to come as a voice for those that are actually being slain today. Well, it used to be that a mommy's tummy was the safest place for a baby. Now it's become one of the most dangerous places. And these little babies, these these are, the, the word in Latin for fetus is, is little one. So these are little ones, these are human beings. The only thing different between them and you and me is just development. So So we're here for their rights because they're human lives made in the image of God. Now they're, they're they do make the argument that, you know, it's it's part of a woman. Well, it's in a woman, but a woman only has ten fingers and ten toes. This, uh, this baby inside them also has ten fingers and ten toes. It's a separate human being. It's, they consider it a parasite. Can you talk about that? Well, I would, I would just say that's, that's a really ugly thing to say. Babies are a beautiful and wonderful thing made in God's image. And, you know what, we really need to support and protect these innocent little babies because they don't have a voice. It gets really simple. If you talk to a five-year-old child and, and, and you point to a pregnant woman, they would say that's a baby in the belly of the mama. And you know what? So these little children often have more wisdom than these adults. You're and celebrating death today. You're celebrating what Satan is celebrating. Do you realize that, that the devil is celebrating abortion? Do you realize that the devil is celebrating abortion? And the devil hates you, folks. He hates you. He wants to kill you and destroy you, but you're doing his work. You're doing what the devil would do if he was a human being on this earth. He would be killing. You're doing what the devil loves. And the one that actually loves you, the one that cares for you, the one that's crying for you, the Lord that loves you, you hate him. That's really messed up, folks. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. Do you realize that? He's very angry with you right now. You're an accomplice to murder. You're an accomplice to murder. You're celebrating murder. You're celebrating death. You're celebrating destruction. And the Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. The Bible says that God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. Do you realize that? that the Almighty, the Creator of the universe, the Creator of the sun and the earth, and everything that is seen and unseen, you are an enemy of His today. 
and he hates what you're celebrating. Folks, it's time to humble yourselves and cry out to God. It's time to get on the Lord's side. It's time to get on the side of righteousness. It's time to get on the side of life. It's time to get on your faces before God before it's too late. He could require your life today. The Lord could require your life today. Do you realize that? And then you will stand before him. The Bible says it is appointed for man once to die, and after this comes the judgments. You will stand before the Lord, and you will say, Why did you not turn? Why did you not save these innocent babies? Why would you not stand up for the most innocent? And he's going to say, You have blood on your hands. He's going to say, Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Folks, this is lawlessness. And his angels will come, the Lord's angels will come, and they will bind you hand and foot, and they will carry you off to the lake of fire, folks. That's forever and ever. You bring shame to this nation, this nation that has given you so much, this nation that has blessed you. The Lord has given you so much, and you bring shame to this nation. How embarrassing, folks. How tragic it is. How tragic it is that you celebrate death. You celebrate the dismembering of little babies. Yes, these little babies today, today just down the road from here, just down the road from here, they're little babies that are, that are, that are in the agoni agonizing right now. They're in their death rows, turning from these doctors, ripping their limbs off, crying out, asking, help me, help me. And there's no one to help, and you celebrate this. Their little arms are being ripped off. Their legs are being ripped off. And here you are celebrating this, celebrating what's ugly, celebrating what's wicked, folks. Get a hold of yourself, folks. Get a hold of yourself. What's the matter with you? What is the matter with you people? What is the matter with you? It's time to get right with God. He could, he could pardon you today. He could pardon you. But you must humble yourselves. You must cry out for mercy. Hi, Brother Terry. How are you? I'm doing good, Jochen. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Brother, it's good to see you again. It's and good to see you. You know what? Uh, it is it is a pleasure talking to you as always, and to make this video now, because we were talking about this for a very long time. And um, yeah, brother, I, I just want you to introduce yourself a little bit. Um, I know what you're doing, but maybe you can explain in a few words what you're doing. Uh, I think what you're doing is great, and a lot of people accuse you that you don't have love and all of this this stuff. But um, just just explain what you're doing for the Lord. Well, about five, five, six years ago, I just felt a, a burning desire that I needed to go preach at the churches and that uh, I felt like the churches were probably one of the most important kind of missionary fields that, that were that were in America because you have many people in these churches that think they're saved and they're actually on their way to hell. And unfortunately, most of the churches in America uh, they're not being led by men that have a heart, uh, heart uh, to please God, but uh, but most of them are hirelings. So I really, I really felt compelled that I was like, this is my mission field. It's actually the churches, the so-called churches of America, and mm -hmm. the best way to reach them was to to just to go out there and preach right in front of the church. Yeah, I mean we have the same problem here. A lot of lukewarm churches, and we know what Jesus Christ thinks about these people. So it's said they are deceived, and uh, there are a lot of false prophets out there. And um, brother, when I ask you now, what is the most used verse that you hear? That they, I mean, <laughs> I know what it is, but you know the verse that people are using against you, and that they are accusing you. Although you speak the words of Jesus Christ, you give them the full gospel. What is the most used verse? Right. Well, whether whether or not you're at a homosexual parade or at a church, they're both going to give you the same verse, which is Matthew seven one. Judge not. Judge not, right. <laughs> and then the rest, they completely forget. They completely ignore what, what the scriptures are saying, what the context is. So Jesus was talking about hypocritical judgment in this passage. He was also saying in John chapter 7, verse 24, and judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. We have actually 
tons of verses that are not suggesting but commanding Christians to judge people by their fruit. Correct. For example, First Corinthians five twelve to thirteen, like to judge them and then if they are unrepentant, to kick them out of the of the church. So uh, we have we see this this come as your arm mentality everywhere, and um, also you know I, I want to talk about um, a little bit about false prophets. I know that you are coming against strongly against these wolves in sheep's clothes, clothing that are fleecing the flock. For example, Todd White or or all the other people there. Um, but also, I want to talk about the influence of the Jezebel spirit. And a lot of people don't don't get this. They think uh, when you're in deliverance and deliverance ministry of Jesus Christ, that we say we we cast out the spirit of a woman, which is nonsense. We are casting out a spirit that is that was influencing Queen Jezebel, a killer of prophets. And the same exact thing is happening in all of these these churches that. Uh, you know, spreading a false watered down gospel. Um, they only talk about grace, love, 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 grace, grace, love, grace, love, 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 grace, love, grace. But they are not talking about repentance. And um, yeah, it is a sad fact that a lot of women undermine male authority. They come against the scriptures. And um, what comes out of that is like they are under a delusion. They are not led by the Holy Spirit. And at the end, and that's why we are doing this, at the end, because of false doctrines, demonic doctrines, damnable heresies, people will go to hell. So, you know, the accusations, we, we don't have love when we are doing this. What, what are you saying about this? I mean, I see it that, that ex to expose wickedness is our job, and it's love to expose wolves in sheep's clothing. That's right. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, Paul was really clear. You know, in season and out of season, convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Uh, it warned about these days that, you know, a time would come when they could no longer endure sound doctrine. Right. Uh, so so we're we're in those days right now. I mean, I, I think it's definitely the Bible speaks very clearly of the days that we're in. And we would be riddled with with false prophets and false teachers. Matthew 24, Jesus, when the when the when the uh, disciples asked him what would be the sign of your coming the first thing that jesus said is take heed lest no one deceive you so we're definitely under a time of great deception you know warned that we were warned about by jesus himself yeah yeah it's a sad thing i mean uh, what what are you saying about people that you know for example there are a lot of people um on youtube they they start their so-called teachings with often with like, oh yeah, if you want to support the ministry, oh, here's a PayPal link. Then sometimes they do this in between, but they make sure at the end everyone again will hear the message. And you can, in my opinion, you often hear just a, a pile of garbage, uh, false teachings. But you know, I, I have even seen people that are um, one person. Maybe we should talk about him. I don't know, but one person is even so. So let's say intelligent that he's often saying like, you know what, um, there are false prophets out there and, uh, you know, they they um, deceive people and they want your money. Um, that's not good. But he is bringing this up all, uh, you know, all the time. But he's saying this in a way, if you're feeling led to, to sow into this ministry, you can do this. But he's bringing this up in almost every video, which is a, which is manipulation, which is witchcraft, in my opinion. Right. Yes. No, I, I, I think that's these are the times that we're in. That's the modern church is uh, they you know, it, it's not trusting in God for finances. It's it's like sales tactic manipulation yeah. uh, that they're using on the flocks. And yeah. so when I when I hear people talking about money, uh, selling merchandise, uh, you know, that's a red flag immediately. If you have to beg and ask and uh, for money for your ministry, um, then you know what? Uh, that's a red flag to me. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And you know what, when you see all these people that are, you know, selling coffee mugs and t-shirts and whatnot in the name of Christ, it's an abomination. It's, it's, it's you know, it, it you know, there's one guy, I, I will do a video about him, I guess. 
uh, I was not going through his videos, you know, when it comes about, is he really casting out demons or not? But he's already putting us in a corner that some people are thinking that people like me are like that. And that this is annoying to me. There's a person that is, you know, you, you heard about, you know, the guy that is, you know, coming against deliverance and, and you know, uh, P. Cabrera Jr., you know, th this is one of the, the, the worst. I, I don't even want to talk about him. But, you know, he's he's taking $700 for one weekend. And what? that's already, you know, what? <sighs> wow. But I just found out that there's a guy and he seems to be kind of popular. I mean, I, I never heard about him before, but I have seen him and someone was posting stuff. And, you know, the, people seeing something is going on on the streets. So maybe it's a, it was a true deliverance or not. I mean, we know that there are false prophets out there doing false signs and miracles and, you know, all this slain in the spirit stuff, falling backwards, drunk in the spirit and all of this. This is a different yeah. spirit. I don't know this about this guy. I don't want to be stupid and blaspheme the Holy Spirit. I was not going through this stuff, what he's doing. But what I know is, I was shocked that this guy, you can book one-on-one -on -one sessions with this guy on Skype. And he's, and, and he, here it is, he is taking $500 an hour for that. Wow. Wow, yeah. And if this is maybe a little bit too much for you, you can ask his wife, and she's only taking $200 an hour. What do we um, say about people like that? All right, here is this guy. His name is Daniel Adams. This is his website. Here you can see one-on-one. -on -one. Want to book a one-on-one -on -one session with Daniel or Heather? Book below. And then check it out. One hour, $500. That is insane. Was Jesus not saying freely you have received, freely give? The screen video that you're seeing right now, I made this in October and now they changed it a little bit. So have a look at that. This is the updated version, December 2021. I made this video today. We will have a look on the one-on-one -on -one sessions in a minute. But before we do so, we check out this nice online shop here. All the shirts and sweaters get them holy ghost and whatnot and nice coffee mugs and i mean isn't that great so all in the name of jesus christ i'm absolutely sure the lord loves it that some people are making money with that in his name unbelievable oh a nice christmas sweater wow we're going back to the one-on-one -on -one sessions and for some reason they changed this here a little bit in December 2021. You see here just one hour and book now. We click on book now and we see one hour is still 500 US dollars. Unbelievable how greedy these people are. Same with his wife. One hour, click on book now and you still see one hour, 200 dollars. My guess is that they will change this again in the near future so that gullible people that are interested in these so-called one-on-one sessions will only get private emails about the costs, about the money they have to pay for something which should be completely free. Because people like me and Terry, we are talking about this. We are exposing greedy wolves in sheep's clothing. This guy's God is mammon. There's something wrong when you're, when you're, when God is using you and his power is flowing through you, and then you're taking money for what God is doing. That's, uh, that's really sick. Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. That's right. Jesus never said, you know what? Uh, you are a special anointed guy here, and you, you can just ignore what I said. Just take $500 an hour. It's not a problem. I love you. Right. It doesn't matter if it's counseling or prayer, casting out demons, or whatnot. As a true man of God, you are not doing something like that. You are not fleecing the flock. You are not enriching yourself with the gospel. And I know about the verses that some people are misusing, desperately twisting them to justify this wickedness. It is not biblical. A true follower of Jesus Christ is not doing something like that. You know it is okay when God is really the one that put into the heart of a person to give a minister a donation. That's okay. But this is certainly not happening every day. 
A minister is not allowed to manipulate people, to bring this up again and again and again and again. Like, oh yeah, you know what, you can sow into my ministry and all of this. A true man of God is not acting like that. And certainly you are not allowed to take $500 for an hour. So I will do a video about this guy because, you know, even if he, he is really casting out demons, what you can see, it's all about him and it's pride. And, and yes. you know, um, the thing is, a lot of, you know, the, the enemies of the deliverance ministry of Jesus Christ, they point out scriptures, for example, when many will come before the throne and they will say, Lord, Lord, we did this and that and, and even casting out demons. And he will say, Depart from me, workers of iniquity. So some yeah. people are misusing this, and they say, see, you think you can cast out demons, and you will end up in hell, and you are a worker of, of iniquity. No, the passage is talking about something different. So if, if you know that your own repentance has nothing to do with the gifts, so technically, yes, you can cast out demons, but, but for example, if you cheat on your wife, and you're not repenting, the reason why you will go to hell is not that you cast out demons, but you cheated on your wife. Correct. You're and a worker of iniquity. And when people see a guy like that taking $500 an hour, I mean, a lot of people are following these, these guys and they see something and, oh, God is with them. And then they start to defend their idols. For yes. example, Robin Sondergaard or Todd White or whatnot, they start to blindly defend their idols. So some of them might have, like, you know, prayed and something happened. We also know that a lot of them are false prophets and, 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 and some people are not really healed. Another question will be, for example, with Todd White and his healing ministry. Uh, just a question. Why are these people are not going into these, you know, in hospitals where, where the sick people are lying there with cancer? Why are not going to, to these people and heal them? Precisely. You would think so, that that would be, that's almost criminal to claim to have the healing power of God and to not want to use it on, on the sick. You know, I'm just so. asking, the thing is, I'm not denying healings in the name of right. Jesus. Christ. I have seen this, you are not denying this. But right. the thing is, like, for example, there are people out there that say like, oh, um, you know what, God wants that everyone is getting healed. And, and that's not biblical. Right. We can right. see that Paul was talking about people, there was even one, clearly a believer, sick near to death. And God had then grace later, you know, like that he was able to overcome this or, or survive. But we see a couple of uh, verses in the Bible and in the New Testament, they're clearly stating that believers were sick. But I heard people like, they, they, so insane. Some, some said, you know, when you become a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit, you will never get sick. What kind of a nonsense is that? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, Paul said to Timothy, a little wine for the stomach. Yeah. So, so obviously, Tim, I think Timothy was was maybe sickly. Yeah, absolutely. I, so. um, I absolutely believe this. But you know, the thing is, for example, this verse I heard that some Muslims try to take it out of context, or other people, and they say, "Oh yeah, Christianity. You know what? You can get drunk." No, <laughs> Paul is saying a little wine. The the, the Bible Correct. speaks against. For example, First Corinthians six nine to ten. In this list of people that will not make it to heaven. That's right. Are mentioned. So um, that's very important. So there are people out there, especially the ones saved, always saved, uh, you know, they're deceived because of this heresy. They really think they can do whatever they want to do. They just have to believe a little bit in Jesus Christ and they got their ticket to heaven. And you're dealing with these people all the time, right? All the time. Uh, it's, it's, it's really sad, but it's... Uh... Most of the people in the churches, unfortunately, they're, they're not even concerned what the Bible says. Uh, it's become, you know, these are their celebrities. These are their entertainers, their performers. And you can really see the idolatry, you know, where, where you give, give people at churches scripture and they really don't care what the scripture says. They're going to defend their idol. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And e even with the, with the Torben Sondergaard case, I mean, it is absolutely clear that this, that this guy is, is robbing, is fleecing the, the flock of money. He's manipulating people. He has no idea about the deliverance ministry of Jesus Christ. He claims to know about demons and all of this. But he says, like, you know what? I just pray a couple of minutes and then someone is completely free of demons. It's completely.
completely unbiblical what he's saying. Yeah. But he exalts himself to be a teacher of a worldwide movement, is a willful liar, and what we have seen a lot of times, the pure hatred coming from so-called Christians when you point out what the scriptures are saying and that you should, you know, you should not be a partaker of evil. Yes, you you call out a false prophet, uh, a false teacher. You you confront him once or twice, it says in the Bible, and then you have nothing to do with him. But it doesn't mean that you be silent, that, that you're just watching that these guys are destroying God's people. And that's what you're doing. You're going to the, all these temples of Todd White and whatnot, and the other, I mean, I mean, you can also mention them you know, if you if you like these these false prophets. Only I don't have a problem with that. But yeah. I have seen this. I have much respect for you. Um, I have seen your videos, and then I started to talk to you. Uh, I don't know when it was, a couple of years ago, and I saw like ma this man is doing the right thing here. And I saw just the hatred coming from so-called Christians. Although the only thing you did was was giving them the full gospel and the the entire words of Jesus Christ, what Jesus was really saying, you were not censoring the gospel. You said, okay, Jesus is saying this about wolves and sheep's clothing. Jesus is saying this about false prophets. Jesus is saying this about people that are fleecing the flock. Those are the words of Jesus Christ, not my words. And I saw the hatred coming towards you. And what they were all doing all the time, judge not, judge not, judge not. Or can I give you a hug? You know, this false law. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's the time that we're living in. It's uh, infant Christianity, if if at best, uh, you know what? It's I, I I really believe that if you don't have the Word of God in you, you can be deceived by anyone. And yeah. most of the churches, you know, that was my biggest probably that was my my biggest concern is I'm going to go out there and start preaching. And these people are going to have so much more Bible knowledge than me. And that is that has not happened. Uh, what I found completely shocked me to where people don't know anything. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know what? You can be if you don't know what the truth is, you know, a deception could sound pretty good. Yeah. And and that's what most of the people in the churches are under, I believe. Yeah. Um, brother, can you please turn a little bit with your face to the right? Yeah, perfect. Oh, oh, sorry. That, that, that's not a problem because right now I want to point out some people will not know it, but yeah. if you see the videos of Terry, Terry has, I think you have like 1% vision. Maybe a little bit less than that. Yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's actually blind. And the thing is, I think it's so beautiful how God is using him because he, as a blind man, is going out on the streets, is giving the people, the other brothers and sisters, the full gospel. And he is rebuking the blind. And as a blind man, he, he, he is leading people out of this mess and, and out of this idolatry. Of course, a lot of most of the people, they just love their idols. They don't want to really listen. But I remember you, you, you told me about a, a young man that was first, for, uh, for example, like coming against you. But later he really listened to you, what, what you said. And those were the words of Jesus Christ. And then he came out of the delusion, right? Do you want to talk about that? You know what? That's that's happened several times. But there was a young man just recently. Uh, we've been out to Todd White's compound probably probably a dozen times. And uh, you just really don't know who you're reaching when you're out there preaching in front of these churches. But he said initially he thought, you know, these people are crazy. And he was laughing and making jokes. And then he said, as as the months went by and he saw us more and more, he said, this isn't funny. And yeah. and he felt really convicted and he actually contacted me and he was like, you know, I need to I need to get out there and, and preach with you. So it's uh, you know, there, there's free people are coming out and, and I, I believe the Lord is is waking up people in these churches. And and a lot of times, you know, you're around, you know, multitudes of deceived people. So when you're coming out of the deception, you're like, what's, you know, is it just me? Is something wrong with me? People, people start questioning themselves. So I think it's important that there are people out there that are showing them, no, that you're, there's nothing wrong with you. The Lord is, is guiding you and he's, he's revealing the truth to you. Jesus Christ said, I'm the good shepherd. 
the good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. The main problem, in my opinion, that we have is most of the people that claim to be Christians, they are not even reading God's word. Yes. And that's no, a very it, bad thing. It, it, it really amazes me sometimes. It's, I, you see just the, uh, the religious hypocrites uh, yeah. in the times of Jesus, and, and it's, it's exactly the same. In, yes. in the in the so-called Christian church today, it's it's yeah. the exact same thing that was going on where where they love money, yeah. uh, they love being seen, they love uh, you know praying and and being seen but and being celebrities. It's there's nothing different yeah. today about the uh, the religious Pharisees in the in the Christian church than there were in the in Judaism. Yeah, modern day Pharisees. That's right. It is so sad, you know, when you when you preach the entire truth, this is, you're doing this out of love, and a lot of people, that's why we're doing this, a lot of people will go to hell, and hell is eternal. So the, one of the deceptions of the Catholic Church is, for example, they, they came up with purgatory, right. and they, they were pleasing the people, and they said, like, you know what, um, give us our money and we pray for the dead and then they will come out of purgatory but there's no purgatory but because of this deception a lot of people thinking yeah their reasoning is ah yeah the catholic church invented purgatory so that means hell is not real but that is another hellish trick of, of satan hell is real and that's why we're warning people and that's the consequence for example i believe you know when we talk about jezebel right now this is the worst that is that is happening in, in most of the churches. That, yes. Then you know, with this false grace and mercy garbage, that watered down gospel, no message of repentance. People will not learn to how to deal with demons, and they are under deception. And this is because we ignore God's chain of authority. Because, you know, the thing is, why we are talking about this, I mean, I was just recently doing a video with Micah Stephen Bell about this topic. It is not that we hate women or that, that God is saying women are, you know, they, they are not worthy or stuff like that. They can do great things for the kingdom of God, but God is a God of order. And um, we hear, for example, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, but I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. So what happens, and a lot of people have a problem with that, I say it here loud and clear, there are no female pastors. There's nothing in the Bible that is backing this up. I know about all of these twistings of the scriptures. Priesthood was never given to women. That's a solid fact. They have different offices, but they, they cannot be a female pastor. And once they're doing this, 100%, I'm absolutely sure, once they're undermining male authority or ignoring what God is saying, they are led by other spirits, but not the Holy Spirit, because they are in rebellion. And the Bible clearly states rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. So God is watching these people and is it is for him like like witches, and they act like yeah. witches. Out of this comes Heidi Baker, Catherine Kuhlman, and all these, these wackos, I must say, the demonically influenced false prophets. Um, can you share a couple of stories or, or what, what your thoughts are about this, about women that are doing this and, yes. and seem to be Christians? What are you saying about this? No, I, I think you're right, and, and a lot of women would probably get the idea that we're anti-woman, but... Uh, but that's that's not true at all. You know, it actually, you know, like in, in Timothy, where Paul says, I will not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man. And and he describes exactly why he he says, because because Adam was not deceived, but Eve being deceived fell into transgression. So there's something about women that women need to know about themselves that they can easily be deceived. 
And that's why Paul said he's not going to allow them to teach or to have authority over them. So as a woman, if you fear God, you know what? You should be very cautious in these areas because, you know what? You know that you can easily be deceived. And, and most women are unfortunately so full of pride that they can't see themselves being deceived. And it just yeah. it just allows for this uh, this evil spirit to even use them even more, I believe. Yeah. You know, when Wally so. ex uh, explained it in a very good way, I hope that I can kind of explain it in the same manner. He yeah. said, you know, it is not that God is hating women. It is right. about, you know, he said like, um, you know, seeing, uh, he compared it, I think, like with a, with a big truck or with a normal car. And he said like, you know what, you can use the big truck for these kind of tasks, but you cannot use it in, an, in another way. But the car you can use for different tasks, but not right. you cannot switch the roads here because God made it in a way that everyone has his place. God is a God of order. So, and, and um, you know, that, that's the thing. Um, you know, I believe that there are certain situations that in, in these cases you need sisters. For example, to talk to a, a woman that was getting raped or whatnot, you need a sister to talk to this woman. Yeah. They have this, you know, God made it in a way that they have, you know, when it comes to emotions, they are able to see things that we are not seeing. That's a solid fact. So I want to point this out. They can do this. But when it comes to deal with doctrines and, for example, talking about repentance and the consequences of, for example, being a willful sinner, Christians included, you know, the, the pressure of being a ministry is so big, and then to see this with, with their eyes, you know, they, to 100%, I've seen this again and again, we all have seen this again and again, these women that are ignoring God's chain of authority, what they are doing is only talking about love and grace, love and grace, love and grace, love and grace, and this is also an influence there, that, you know, the, the, the unclean spirits, because of their rebellion, will overtake them, and then they, they, they preach I, I don't don't even want to use the word but but spread a false hippie gospel right i mean i don't have some people are offended by that i i just today someone was offended by that that i said like get away with your hippie gospel that's a false gospel that's a false love a, a woodstock love that everything goes you know you just fornicate with everyone the bible's not teaching this for example yes. i mentioned 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10, a list of people, Paul made it clear, a list of people that will not enter into the kingdom of God. So false teachers then try to, for example, to twist this and they say, ah, yeah, that's true what you're saying. But you know what? You know, there's the, the one, one uh, part that says you have to understand the cultural context. <laughs> and all Jezebels are saying that. Or this was only for Corinth. This, this is for the church of Corinth. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's why it is in the scriptures for us to learn. Yeah. I mean, it's the one thing. Or you have the other guys that are saying, yes, it is, it is talking about that. But you know what? Paul was speaking in this passage only about unbelievers. And then you can go to, you know, that's, that's very important that brothers and sisters are hearing this. When they come up with this garbage, I, I quickly refer to the mirror passage in Ephesians chapter 3 to 5. Same exact stuff, you know, and then he's, he's pointing that out that, you know, he, he's, he's talking that this is for the saints to hear, that the saints should behave like that, and they must stay away from fornication and all of this and idolatry. Right. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not even be named among you, as is fitting for saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. With these two passages, or the mirror passage of, you know, in Ephesians 5, 3 to 5, it is actually already game over for once saved always saved it's yes. completely done and the people that are still saying you know i mean a lot of people are saying yeah jesus christ said repent or perish but you know this was before the crucifixion and now his perfect work is done and that means in their head they can do whatever they want but still in the book of revelation he made he makes it clear again and again and again 
that there are conditions, and if you don't meet them, you will not enter into the kingdom of God. It's, it's that's right. I mean, how many how many people know? You know, like in Revelation twenty one, where uh, all liars will have their part in the lake which burns with fire. Most people think, you know, what it's okay and acceptable to lie. Yes. But Jesus Himself is saying, you know what, you will, you will have your part in the the lake which burns burns with fire and brimstone. Absolutely true. And in so. another passage, I think it is, if I'm not mistaken, a chapter before that he says, everyone that loves the lie. I'm sorry, it was a chapter after this passage, not before. We hear in Revelation chapter 22, but outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters. And whoever loves and practices a lie. And that's the thing. If you love to lie, I mean, when you realize you just said a lie, there's still a chance to repent. So I, I yes. want to give brothers and sisters and listeners here to, that they understand, you know, it's the same with Hebrews chapter 10. Yes, it says, for if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there will be no more sacrifice for sins. But, you know, this passage is often misused. There, there are the, some false teachers there saying, oh, yes, this is in the New Testament and the book of Hebrews, but you know what? This is only talking about certain Jews that went back to the Old Testament, you know, the old sacrificial system. Really. Right. That's why the author is talking to brothers and sisters in Christ. I mean, that's, that's insane. <clears throat> the other thing is that if you, if you ignore, the, that's why it's so important to see the, all the scriptures, that, you know, it is not, it is saying this will come out if you don't repent. That's right. No, I, I believe that, that many Christians believe they're, they're like, you know what, I'm covered by the blood. You know what, I don't need to repent. I'm forgiven of all my sins, past, future, present. But I yeah. believe that, that Hebrews 10, 26, that, that clearly says that you're not covered. Yes, you're, yeah. you, and if you don't repent, uh, you're, you're, you're in great danger. I mean, people like Andrew Womack. Andrew Womack openly said, it doesn't matter. I can rob a bank. I can do this and that. It still loves me and I will go to heaven. Insane. Yeah. If you start taking your freedom and liberty in Christ and the authority and the love and the peace and the grace that God has given you and you start saying, man, now God loves me. And so I can go out and live in sin. I can break the law. I can steal. I could rob a bank. And you know what? God will still love me. That is absolutely true. That is absolutely true. There is no condemnation from God over your actions. So I can go out and live in sin. I can break the law. I can steal. I could rob a bank. And you know what? God will still love me. That is absolutely true. He just says if you sin, you'll, you'll meet uh, Jesus sooner. He actually says that, that... That if, if you're sinning and your sin has consequences on this earth that could they could cause your you know cause you to die, you're going to just meet the Lord sooner if you're saved. Insane. So it is insane. insane. So and I don't I don't know what to say about this. I mean, that's the yeah. point. You know, I believe a lot of people that are, you know, riddled with demons and they're when they hear the true gospel message, they're freaking out, they accuse someone, and they, they say it's righteous anger. I think it's very rare that a Christian has righteous anger. We must be very careful. But in such a case, when I hear something like that, I think when you get angry because these people are twisting God's words in, in, in all these ways and even making themselves rich with that, and, and you, you, you as a true born-again believer, and, and I know after my born-again experience, I knew Jesus Christ is the truth. Yes. I know that he is not a liar and that he speaks the truth. And no matter what a, what a person like a false prophet is saying, if you say something different, you are the liar. And if you don't repent, you will go to hell. The Bible right. is clear. But, you know, brother, what would you say about a woman that is um, on a weekly basis participating in Zoom meetings uh, deliverance meetings is doing this for years. I, I point this out. Right. Is doing this for years. Is hearing almost every week the message that you know, for example, that Jesus Christ hates Jezebel, and that we cannot tolerate this in the church. 
that that woman cannot undermine male authority or exalt themselves as as female pastors or whatnot. That is willfully, you know, is is hearing about Benny Hinn and these false false prophets, you know, they're, they're, they're actually demonizing people, when people falling backwards and all is slain in the spirit and drunk in the spirit nonsense, and is it knows about, you know, wackos like Catherine Kuhlman and all these, these weird demonized people is listening to this almost every week, or I would say about Jezebel and undermining male authority and a false Holy Spirit is listening to this every week is into connection with a lot of deliverance ministries. I say infiltrated them, but is then behind the back of the minister or the brothers and sisters is promoting Benny Hinn, is promoting Catherine Kuhlman, is wow. promoting women that are doing this, is even promoting witchcraft books, you know, new age stuff like that. What would you say? about a woman like that, especially when multiple brothers and sisters over a period of years confronted her with that, said she need to repent. She, she is claiming, oh, it's just a big misunderstanding. And we're talking about years here. And all, all these people are just, you know, misunderstanding her. She's pretending to be huh. the victim. Um, you know, according to the Bible, you approach someone in private, then you take two or three witnesses. Then you bring it before the entire church, and when right. someone is still not repenting, you kick this person out. That that's biblical. What would you say when something like that is happening? This woman is in I say infiltrating multiple deliverance ministries, is you know, presenting herself to be a godly woman, but is also fleecing the flock, is clearly teaching, and is right. even spreading antichrist doctrine and false prophets and whatnot. What would you say about well, that? You know what, honestly, I this doesn't even sound like a sister in the Lord. This sounds like someone that's been deceived by Satan, thinking she she may actually think she is a Christian, but this person needs to 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 come to repentance and and uh, she needs to be ejected from the church or 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 uh, uh, she needs to repent one way or the other. Yeah, but when but right now it sounds it sounds like she's being used as a tool of Satan, what you're yeah. describing. You know, when, when when a person is approached by multiple brothers and sisters from different countries over yeah. a period of years, and is even this woman even dared to lie, you know, I, I was, you know, I was poking the hornet's nest, you know, that's what right. I, I describe it like that. And I was uh, brutally, I was pointing this out. And, and uh, she even dared to go to the elder of the or not, not, she was not going to that. She claimed that the elder of this ministry rebuked me <laughs> and another sister that confronted her and said, like, yeah, they need to stop. He said it, or they will be kicked out. Stuff like that. Wow. And it turned out, you know, she was sending messages like that to another sister to try to, to manipulate her in a way that, you know, she tried to, to to say or convince her that I'm wrong and I should never do this again and the elders said that and what and it turned out to be a complete willful lie. I mean to do something like that, this is premeditated evil. You 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 don't just not you know you there's no way in my opinion that you're just like oh be misunderstood. You are thinking about things, you're entertaining these wicked thoughts, you plan this, you manipulate, you deceive, you willfully lie. I mean, and then you're doing this stuff like this for years. This is what I call an unrepentant, willful, wicked person. You know, often people are saying, you know what? Yeah, this person is deceived or maybe thinks that she is a Christian. I think in this case, this woman is doing this for years. Wow. And, and it was confronted over years by multiple people. And you know what she says? She even said, like, there were a couple of times when, when some brother said, you know what, you need deliverance and you, you need to repent. And she just says, no, I don't need to repent. You got it all wrong. And even using the scriptures. I mean, in such a case, you cannot wow. just sit back, in my opinion, you cannot just sit back and say things like, oh, let the Holy Spirit deal with this. Because Jesus Christ is clearly telling us we must overcome this. We cannot tolerate this. And according to the Bible, you have to remove 
a person that is spreading this cancerous stuff in the body of Christ because you know what she's doing? She is, I have seen this again and again and again. She has this sick urge to when someone new comes into a Zoom meeting to immediately attach yourself to the person and, oh, give me your email address. Oh, here's my email address. Oh, we can fellowship. And, wow. and when a person said like, yeah, you know what? Um, I will think about that. She will bring it up again. You know, really like many right. and wants to control, dominate and separate certain individuals. And I think that's very, very, very dangerous when someone is a newborn believer. He's falling for this. He thinks, oh, this is a, a nice sister wants to help me. And then she will destroy this person. Exactly. No, this is an unruly person, it sounds like. And uh, you know what? It's you've got to, it's got to be stopped. Uh, yes. Yeah. And, and there needs to be real repentance. And it sounds like this person uh, that you're talking about doesn't want to be under the authority of anyone. I mean, if she was under the authority, she would be listening to the authorities. Yes. I mean, so there's, can, there's hmm. no way to justify this. That, for example, I, I mean, I was dealing with a lot of Jezebels, but yeah. I never encountered one that is that is infiltrating deliverance ministries, right. that is presenting herself to be a humble woman of God, hmm. and even said in some Zoom chats, for example, when, right. when a, sister, a new sister is asking, oh, I, I don't understand it. Can we teach? Uh, or not, uh, can we spread the gospel message, or is it already teaching? And she is saying, and I have screenshots and videos about it, I kept a lot of evidence, uh, after she was, you know, rebuked a lot of times, oh, no, we cannot do something like that, we cannot undermine male authority, that is evil, and we cannot, and, and she is doing this behind our backs, and she is, like, even promoting satanic teaching, wow. and, you know, participating on a weekly basis and pretend, I mean, what is it? That, that is being wicked, to pretend to be a humble woman of the Lord, but behind our backs is is, is doing the most wicked stuff. And I, I heard a testimony right. of another sister that back then she did not know it. She presents herself like, oh, I baptized 200 people or whatnot. And it was a sister back then, she did not know about it. She was bringing some people to this woman to baptize them. And she was furiously freaking out, like, why are you bringing here, uh, bringing these people here? Like, in a, what kind of a Christian would say something like that? What kind of a sister is that? You bring people to baptize them and you're freaking out, you're annoyed by that? What's wrong with you? Mm. Wow. But you know what? Right now, a lot of people attack me, backstab me, because I point this out. There was even one person that said, like, yeah, let's deal with her. You're so right. And this must stop. And this is dangerous to the body of Christ. And, uh, this, you know, she's spreading false false doctrines and, and everything uh, the elder is talking about on a weekly basis. This is absolutely against this. And she knows that, yes, let's take Jazzy down. We must confront her. And we must deal with this problem. It's very, very dangerous. In less than one week, this person turned 180 degrees and was backstabbing me. What are you yeah. saying about these people? You know what? It's time to exercise authority. You know, it's no, it, there's no reason to have a police force if you're not going to use it. If you have the authority to stop crime, then you need to, it ha the crime has to be stopped. Uh, you know, this person needs to be dealt with. And yes. uh, number one, you know what? She needs to be expelled from the groups, expelled from the church. And you know what? And then, you know, it needs to be people with discernment, obviously. When, when there is real repentance, she can be welcomed back. Yes, so. that, that's what I said a lot of times, when there are signs of true repentance. That, that's right. There needs to be, you know, like, like uh, uh, John the Baptist, she needs to bear that fruit of repentance, bear that. Yeah. She, yes. she needs to be showing that fruit. Yes. And, yeah. and, it, and this fruit would come across as humility uh, yeah. and... Uh, and not yeah, having oh, the last word and stuff like that. That's and right. Arguing. Yeah. And just obedience. When somebody says do this, you know what? Hey, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just obey. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So. That's wow. You hear this man's opinion when it comes to tolerating Jezebel in the church, and his opinion is biblical. It's terrible. This is, uh, this causes. I mean, this is almost. This causes a lot of damage. 
yes. in the body. It's undermining. Mm -hmm. You're putting people against each other. Uh, it, this is causing a lot of conflict that this person. That is that is true. You know, this this person alone was destroying a lot of relationships. Is causing division. It's really it is an agent of Satan. I have no other words for that. And right. and the thing is, like you know, for example, what what comes out of that? A lot of people are getting in the background manipulated, and also Jezebels are siding with Jezebels, and then they try wow. to to stop this. And oh, he has no grace and no love, and I cannot see the love of Christ <clears throat> him and blah 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 blah. Always, often, or most of the time in the background, so that you don't hear this, so that you cannot confront them. But right. what would you say, for example? I, I mean, I already know what you think about it, but just for yeah. the listeners, when I just ask you, what would you say when you, when you, after years, and you know, that's not, that's not biblical anymore, because biblical is you talk to a person in private, then with two right. or three witnesses, if this person is not changing, unrepented, you kick this person out. You don't deal with this for years. But right. what would you say, brother, when I then say, is it rightful, is it, is it okay in such a case, to name a person, to expose this person with name that everyone knows this is the person. Is this biblical? Is this righteous behavior? Yes or no? Well, I, I, I believe I believe so. I mean, and uh, I'm trying to think. It, it, it says Paul was talking, I believe this was in Corinthians, were to judge what is inside the church. Yes. You know, and... Uh, and we're to do it in a way that others will fear it. Those who are sinning, rebuke in the presence of all, that the rest also may fear. We're to judge and make examples of them, uh, I believe, so the rest will fear. And, and, also, and sh Go ahead. You know, also, it is absolutely clear that Paul was naming people in the Bible. He, he named people all the time. Yeah. You know? Uh, people that somebody, the coppersmith that did him harm, let God repay him. Yes. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must beware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. That's what the Apostle Paul and the church was doing. That's all New Testament. So That's right. Some, some people, when they hear something like that, I hear this often. Oh, you cannot do this. Oh, that's so bad. Would Jesus Christ ever do something like that? Yes, Jesus Christ was doing things like that. He was taking right. away. He called people brood of vipers, hypocrites, fools. And according to 1 John 2, 6, I must do my best to walk as he walked. That's right. So a true follower of Jesus Christ is not just pretending to not see certain things. When, when wickedness is destroying the church, you, you cannot just right. say, and I believe personally, when you know it, you see what is going on, and you know it's false. Right. You are partaker of evil, and on Judgment Day, you will have no excuse. You You're, have exact, no excuse. You're cannot, exactly right. Oh, I never knew this. Oh, oh, ah, I was supposed to do something. You have no chance on Judgment Day. Right. And, and unfortunately, this is going on just about in every church in America. Yeah. But uh, what they don't want to do is they don't want to offend anyone. Yeah. Uh, they don't want anybody to be unhappy, so they just they don't even address these situations. Yeah, so, you know what they're doing there, they say like, you know what, you cause division, you cause division. That's what right. they say. Right. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ was causing division, is still causing division. His true message, the entire message, is causing division. And I try to find this passage. There's a passage, you know. Often they are coming up, I think it was 1 Corinthians chapter 1, you know, no divisions is all of this. But, you know, Paul is saying, uh, maybe I, I will edit this video in a way that I will put this in here when I not find it. I think it's also in 1 Corinthians, uh, is it chapter 11 as well? I think so. When Paul is talking about there must be, oh, I got it here. Um, you know, that's somehow, coincidentally, they never bring something up like that. Same with debates. You know, they say, oh, yeah, that, that's unbiblical. We, we should not have debates and stuff like that. Yeah, we should not talk about genealogies. That's nonsense. Right. But you know, when it's about the truth, I hear this again and again. When people want to be so smart and they cherry pick verses, they say, well, what you're doing is wrong. And, you know, having debates and this is not of Christ and blah, blah, blah. And they cherry pick verses justify their wicked behavior. But they have the right to accuse you. That's what they do all the time. 
but run away like little cowards, not doing what, for example, Jude chapter, not chapter, uh, verse three is saying that we must contend for the faith. That's right. It was once and for all delivered unto the saints. But here, for example, this is a very interesting passage. So I'm not about division. I don't like division. But when there's a problem in the body of Christ, I'm going to deal with it. I have to. I'm commanded to do this. But here, listen to this, for example. This is something that these people never bringing up. So they just cherry pick a, a verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. But here, this is a, a very interesting passage. We hear, for first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. All right. But then... For there must be also, uh, sorry, for there must also be factions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. So, you know, it is, the, he's talking about something will happen in the church, and there's the separation of the wheat and the tares. And that's what happens now, right now. And, you know, Jesus Christ said, you know it, that it's a narrow path. Is is one safe always the uh, one safe always safe the narrow path? Is do whatever you want to do, just believe a little bit that Jesus Christ also died for your future sins. Is this, you know, is this the narrow path or is it uh, do what thou wilt, you know, Alistair Crowley trend? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it is. It is. You know, and, and you bring up this stuff and and. What are these so-called Christians saying? You're hateful. You don't have the love of Christ. No, you know what? You have some some people in the church that they can say, oh, those wicked homosexuals, these people, these wicked sinners over here. But Technical difficulties. I guess Satan was not that amused that we were talking about this. I have seen this a lot of times. Maybe some people will say, oh, that can happen. That's just, you know, the equipment. Um, I have seen this a lot of times, especially when you talk about Jezebel and demonic activity in a church. And then stuff like that is happening. After a few moments and prayer, we were able to talk again. Now it's working again. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, all right. It's working again. Uh, you know what? I have seen stuff like that a lot of times, especially... <laughs> About certain things. So the last thing that I heard that you said wicked homosexuals and then it cut off. So yes. <laughs> I don't know what you, um, can you remember what you wanted to say? No, no, basically what I was saying is the you know what? Uh people are okay pointing the finger at the wicked homosexuals, the wicked this, the wicked that, but uh people don't want to receive correction in the church. Yeah, you know, the the people, you know what? They're okay pointing the finger at oh these wicked people here, but if people in the church, many of them are too proud to to receive correction. Yeah, and it's it's you know what? As far as I'm concerned, it doesn't really matter. You know, I mean, don't you know? We're, if you're not going to take correction, then you know what? You're just as bad as that wicked homosexual. You're in rebellion. Yes, absolutely, and. You know, so. this reminds me about a passage here. Maybe, yeah, I'm bringing this up here right now. Um, give me a couple of seconds so that I don't butcher the scriptures in your language. Sure. Um, but, you know, the thing is, like, a lot of Christians, they, they have this idea, or they, I have seen this, I don't know, hundreds of times, you as well, that they are kind of afraid for the sake of a false peace. And they say, like, yeah, but you know what? We are all Christians. And uh, this, is, this is a brother here. And this is a... It depends on the situation. I mean, you must rightly judge what is going on. You have to get all the information, and you cannot fool by people. You know, when they are not truly repenting, and they still keep up with, you know, keeping doing wicked things, you you have to deal with this. When they are unrepentant, you have to kick them out. The lukewarm believer says, "Oh no, we cannot do this. This is not Christ-like. We are all the same. We must tolerate everything." They accept damnable heresies. They let the cancer spread in the church and say amen to that. The word of God says, For what have I to do with judging those also who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. 
a true pastor, a person that has a, a pastor's heart, and not a, like like you rightfully said, like who is not a person like a hireling shepherd, a false shepherd, right. a person that has truly a pastor's heart, he must exercise biblical authority and must kick out this person. It's absolutely perfectly biblical. When we hear in the same passage, the same chapter, uh, we hear, I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators, yet not altogether with the fornicators of the world, or with the covetous, or extortioners, or with idolaters, for them must ye needs, uh, needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you, not to keep company if any man that is called a brother or a sister, be a fornicator, or a covetous, or an idolater, or a railer, or a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such an one know not to eat, not, not even to eat with a person like that. And yet yeah. we see all these false you know, churches, they're sitting together, having a cup of coffee, piece of cake, singing Kumbaya, my lords. They say like, oh, I love the Lord so much, but a lot of them are, are willful sinners, are fornicators, are, are masturbators, yes. are into porn. Are, I mean, to make it clear, these people, in case they are not repenting, that's, that's what we must point out all the time. If they are not truly repenting, they are right. unrepentant, they will go to hell, right? 100 percent yeah is it love that we talk about this i think yes it is love yes we don't want that these people are going to hell we don't want that brothers and sisters are going to hell because of the influence of false satanic teachers correct yeah you know i mean i would love i would love to talk about just grace and mercy all day long but i cannot I cannot. It's it's way too. The entire situation is way too serious, and it seems like a lot of churches are in a kind of a slumber. They they're sleeping. No, that's right. And and what is that verse? The the grace of God, which has appeared to all men. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously and godly in the present age the grace of god teaches us uh to not to sin so yeah. if the yeah. grace of god is not teaching you to stop sinning then it's not the grace of god you know yeah that's that's absolutely true yeah. for example there's a passage in hebrews uh that is talking about you know god's chastisement and yes. it's pretty clear that when you're not getting chastised you know he's not correcting you he's not pointing that out with his Holy Spirit, you are a bastard. That's right. You're an illegitimate son or daughter. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and live? For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. What Micah said, that's something I have to often think about. And Micah Stephen Bell, he is now into the deliverance ministry for over 40 years. He is 84 years old. Uh, I, I think we, could consider, we can consider him to be an elder. And right. he said, he said, uh, to me in private, he said, you know what, brother, I, I have met so many people and a lot of them claim to be born again Christians, Holy Spirit filled believers, and he said the sad thing is they never were. I believe that. And it's it's sad, but it, they, a lot of these people are just filled with religious spirits. That's what I right. mean. No, I, I don't know if I ever told you this. Uh, about five years ago when I went to Kenneth Copeland's The Believers Convention, yeah. Uh, and I, I really believe that these were people that just had bad doctrine. 
Uh, these people were people that, uh, uh, you know what, were were just following a bad guy and they got ensnared. But yeah. I, I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said, these are not my people. These are goats. Yes. That uh, you, you've got, they may think they're his people, but uh, I, I, I believe that's really the case across the world with many Christian churches is you've got a lot of people pretending to be Christians that may actually even think they're Christians that aren't Christians. It's good that you brought up uh, um, yeah. Ken Copeland because Micah also told me that when when he was younger, they both were younger, he met Kenneth Copeland once. Oh, wow. Uh, saw him. And he said, like, back then, it seems seemed that he was not like that. And then you can see, you, always you can see, if you, if you trace this back, you can see the satanic influence. This guy was coming under the false authority of Kenneth Hagen. Wow. And Kenneth Hagen, you know, with all these, these slain in the spirit, Holy Spirit, laughter, nonsense. Right. This guy was even hissing like a snake. The, the, the sounds he made and stuff like that. Drunk again! And, you know, it's very interesting that you know about that, that Kenneth Copeland, you know, Todd White is calling Kenneth Copeland his spiritual father. Right. And Kenneth Copeland and Todd White, they are all about the new world, like the one world religion, working with the Pope. I mean, it cannot be more antichrist than that. It's impossible. And also like Sondergaard, I heard, was under the influence of Todd Bentley which is wow. another weird wacko. And, you know, you see this, the unholy influence going through all these generations. And, you know, I mean, Kenneth Copeland even did a blood ritual on stage. Did, did you know about that? I, I didn't know about that. <laughs> That's the cutting. Okay. <clears throat> And then I would do the same. Jesus said, take this cup. This is my blood of the new covenant. Now we've mixed our blood. Right. Which is his and which is mine. Now our blood has symbolically has been mixed here. Now at the communion table. Yes, sir. He said, this is my blood of the new covenant. All of you drink all of it. Now, and I want you to be this way every time you take communion and you ought to take it a lot, a lot. Now his blood mm. is in my body. Yes, sir. It's in there. His blood is mixed with my blood. Can you see it? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We are really in the last days, brother. I, I believe so. Yeah. Brother, um, yeah, I think we, we exchanged a lot of very good informations and i absolutely believe the ones that are looking for the truth that uh they are they will be edified by that and hopefully will be encouraged to 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 stand up and, and speak and, and 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 share the true gospel everything that jesus christ said and not a censored uh, uh castrated gospel message so is there something right now what what you want to share some personal words or personal experiences or 
what what you want to share with the body of Christ? You know what I I think the most important thing is is just as as people in America don't believe anyone, don't trust anyone. Uh, you know, seek the Lord, uh, be in the Word, uh, and if if you're blessed enough to have good brothers and sisters around you, that is a blessing, but it's not a blessing to be in a false church. It's not a blessing to be around fake Christians. It's not a blessing to have a fake pastor who's a false teacher. So the most important thing is we, we should be seeking God and uh, not have anything to do with somebody that calls themselves a brother that doesn't act like a brother. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. He who abides in the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this doctrine, do not receive him into your house nor greet him. For he who greets him shares in his evil deeds. For example, with us, it's the same thing. We have a very good contact. And I think the Lord brought us together. Yes, we are on the yes. same page. And I don't have a, you know, like here, most of the churches, they, they are preaching false doctrines. A once saved, always saved gospel. But the Lord can, if you're serious, the Lord will bring you together with other brothers and sisters worldwide. There is a way. Yes. And you can have fellowship. You don't have to go in a building filled with idols and false doctrines and whatnot. The Lord is very well able to do this. He brought me brothers and sisters worldwide that are true born-again believers and very serious. And we have fellowship. And I must also, I do this here in the open. I thank Terry for his family. He and his family, they are praying for me often. And I'm absolutely sure there were situations in my life in the last couple of years that his prayers and the prayers of his family, they made a difference. And I know that we are connected in the spirit. So I, I want to bring this message for the brothers and sisters that they have no real fellowship. There is a way to have fellowship. I asked Terry about his worst experiences regarding the lukewarm church. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of the worst, but... You know, most of the times when I'm attacked, it's a woman. I was attacked by a woman at a Methodist church one time that yeah. uh, I was literally having to, I had a GoPro camera on my sign and I yeah. was having to wrestle that out of her hand because she was trying to take it. And she broke my sign and was throwing it out in the road. But uh, that was true Jezebelic manifestation right there, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what? I think. I can't say this for sure, but I think I was smelling alcohol in her breath. Yeah. And that, I was there at a church service. But uh, the most, the really interesting thing that, that I think is just our culture, our country, uh, what has happened to just the gentleness uh, yeah. of, of the women that's out there? And I just, it's lacking in the country and it's lacking in the churches. The older woman likewise, that they be reverent in behavior, not slanderous, not given to much wine, teachers of good things. And please notice, the good things are mentioned here. It does not say, become an unbiblical female pastor that is twisting God's word and is ignoring what God has to say about priesthood and the chain of authority. Here are the good things, that they admonish the young woman to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. We see this, you know, this gender madness, for example. You know, a couple of years ago, if you would have said like, oh, I, I have 38 genders or whatnot, people would say, no, you have a multiple personality <laughs> disorder. Right. Now, now you, it slowly starts when you say something against that. You are a hateful person. You must accept that, you know, a, a person is, is marrying a tree or a car or has 38 uh, genders. Yeah. And when you say something against that, you are the evil, wicked Christian. What is that? I mean, right. No, we, we've uh, entered into uh, some crazy territory. That I, I, you know what, I couldn't even imagine growing up that we would have gay marriage in this country. Yeah. But, uh, but that's, that's little stuff now. Just look at this. 
a couple of people that married trees. Pure madness. And that is not even the worst of things that are happening in the world. Maybe you can share some passages with the, with the listeners when it comes to, um, for example, uh, you know, what Jesus Christ is saying about, uh, um, you know, wealth, finances. Should we focus on that or what is Jesus Christ saying about that? Well, uh, you know what, it's, I, th I think if you just spend a lot of time in Matthew 5, 6, and 7, it answers. If, if we could just take those three chapters and live those, uh, that would answer most of the questions in the, in the Christian churches. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. He said, do not store up treasure on this earth, where, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasure in heaven. Yeah, perfect. So, yeah. You're often saying, <laughs> you're often saying, not living like Liberace, right? <laughs> Liberace. <laughs> yeah. I had to Google this guy after this. I was thinking like, what is this? Okay, I have to Google this Liberace guy. And I did. And oh, man. I mean. Yeah. When I was growing up, he was like this flamboyant homosexual on TV that played the piano. And his house was covered in chandeliers. And it seems a lot of these ministers truly have the same taste yes. as, as he does. So. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. They're living in big mansions and, you know, all of this. I mean, they're, 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 they're living in temples. I mean, I can't see, I can't see this in the Bible. I mean, what, what was Jesus saying? You, you remember this, you know, that foxes have holes in, in the past. That's right. Birds yeah. have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And, uh, you know what? I mean, that's, that's something that I even deal with is, is it's like, you know, we're to deny ourselves. Yeah. And take up our cross and follow after him. He said, Jesus said, do not store up treasure on this earth. Yeah. So, you know what? It's, we obviously, you know, it, all this wealth, everything can be shaken and taken from us. So, you know what? Uh, it's, you know, we need money to do things. But uh, when you start using the gospel to buy mansions and Rolls Royces, uh, you know what? You've crossed the line. And yes. uh, I, I think it's interesting. Uh, Judas betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And mm -hmm. it sounds like he was not forgiven. Uh, no. Jesus said it would have been better that he was never born. But yet Peter denied Jesus three times. Yeah. And, and he was restored. So there's something about using God to take money from people. Uh, I think, the, you know what? People are going to be in for a big surprise. Some of these pastors that have, have yeah. really taken advantage of uh, the people of God. Yeah. You know what? I really believe it's the same with uh, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't know what it really is. And they come up with nonsense. But I have uh, encountered people that did that. Yeah. And there's a change. And then, you know, for example, with deliverance, yes, I, I, you know, I can understand a person that never heard about deliverance and, and, and is seeing first, the first time ever, maybe a, a satanic freak like Benny Hinn right. was op operating under a different spirit. Okay, when you have a check in your spirit and then you say something is wrong and this is not of God, okay, I, I really believe that God will not say like, you know what, you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, no. But when you, for example, say, um, you know, there's a person, another person prayed for, for him. Demons came out of him. And he's saying, yes, demons left me in the name of Jesus Christ. I was tormented. I feel much better. Yes, this is true. I was tormented. And I know that prayer in prayer is power. And yes, Mark 16, 17, that, that everyone that is believing in his name will cast out demons and all of this. It is right. real. 
And you still say, after you heard this, this testimony and, and the evidence, you, and you still say, no, this is of Satan. This is all satanic. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, we see it. You know, the problem a lot of Christians have, like they, they have their favorite gospel, but somehow they are not, not checking out what the other gospels are saying. Maybe these people should check out this translation here, the Holy Bible cherry-picked edition, so they get then perfectly equipped to attack the deliverance ministry of Jesus Christ and to defend their wicked lifestyles. It clearly says, because they said he had an unclean spirit. And, you know, that he's casting out demons by the power of bells. Right. And it's the same thing when you say this nowadays, and it's absolutely clear if you if you go through the scriptures that you still can commit the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. There are people out there that say, oh, no, this was just for the people back then. They did not accept Jesus <laughs> as, as their Messiah. So you cannot commit the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, really. There are passages that are clearly pointing that out, that you still can do this. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. So that's the problem with people that are, they have their favorite gospel or their, their handful of favorite verses and they're too lazy, for example, to read the Bible. Uh, how often I did encounter this, um, of people that they are saying like, you know what? Uh, for example, I was in a, in a Bible study group and I left them and, and, and one of them I was getting kicked out because, uh, and actually in two of them because I was I was talking about the full gospel and they didn't like that. But there were people that they, they came to me and they said like, uh, I wish I would have time to read the Bible like you, you know, I'm so guilty <laughs> and whatnot. And then I was just sitting there. And you just had to, had to listen to these people, what they, what they are when they're talking to each other. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know, they're out of sudden, they're talking about, oh, did you saw the last episode of The Walking Dead yesterday? <laughs> or did, did you saw the sports game and whatnot? And, you know, when this, you know, I'm not doing this immediately. But when someone is doing this and I listen, listen to this and he is again coming up to me and is saying like, oh, I wish I would have time like you to read the, the Bible. Right. And I say, you know what? Shut up, you liar. You are a liar. You are a liar. I don't want to hear it. And then they are offended. And then I say, you know what? In our culture, in our time, you know what? In other countries, they just get you with a page of the Bible and you're dead. They kill you. And you, liar, you dare to tell me you don't have any time to read the Bible, but you're talking openly about... Uh, you know, watching Netflix series and sports games all day long and whatnot. Right. I mean, I yeah. I see this often. I don't expect that people are reading 20 chapters every day. But you can, every day, for example, Proverbs, there are 31 Proverbs, you can read every day a proverb. It will change your life and it takes you like maximum maybe two or three minutes. You can read Psalms. You can read one chapter. What is one chapter? What times? Maybe like 10 minutes, longest chapter? I don't know. But you, you cannot tell me in our time right now that you don't have time to read the Bible, but you have plenty of time to, to play video games or watch Netflix series or your idols in, in, in sports games and whatnot. I mean, get real. I mean, that, that's insane. It is insane. And you know what it shows us? These people, they don't want to hear about God. They don't want to know him and they hate his opinion. They, they love the, you know, this, this, I often say this supernatural vending machine that is giving, okay. them, you know, fulfilling right. their wishes all the time. But when it comes about what you said, that's another thing. You, you brought it up perfectly, you know, with deny yourself. Yes. Some people, they bring this up and they say like, yeah, Jesus was saying this. But they, they, they choose the verses from their favorite gospels in this case. But the one in one of the gospels, gospels, he clearly stated that we must deny ourselves daily. That's right. The one time thing. And yeah. No, I remember when I I first became a Christian, I and I was I was going through the Bible and and Jesus was you know the uh, 
Jesus was going through to love God with all of your hearts, all of your mind, all of your strength. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I've never done that in my life. And, and it scared me because yeah. I was like, I was like, how am I going to be able to do this? Yeah. And it was at the beginning of my walk. And, and, uh, you know what? It's, you have time to do the things that you love. You'll make time to do what you love. Right. And, and whatever you love, you're going to do. Yeah. So, and I think Jesus said that where your heart is, there's also your treasure, right? That's correct. Yeah. 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 So. And that's the thing. I mean, um, I'm not saying you can never watch a movie or something like that. I mean, when right. I became a born again believer, it changed. I was a lot into horror movies and stuff like that and also other stuff. And I even tried after I became a born again believer, I even tried to to watch like a couple of my favorite movies from back then, you know, The Thing and, and Aliens and whatnot. Right. And I was watching it. And it was not moving me anymore. Yeah. It felt like it, a waste of time. Yeah. And But my, my position is, you know, it, it is okay here and there to watch a movie or, or get, get, you know, having a little bit fun and stuff like that. Yes, that's okay. But when this is becoming your idol and, yeah. and you put this before God, you have a big problem. I and mean, you, you don't love God. And especially the ones that are, you know, all these so-called Christians that are saying like, oh, I love the Lord so much. I love him. He is my everything. And and out of sudden, especially rebellious women, I must point this out. They're bringing this often like, oh, I love the Lord. And and often you see like, oh, what, what is your ma most favorite uh, thing, you know, when, when it comes to fellowship? Oh, singing worship songs, singing worship <laughs> songs. I love that so much, really. But you're yeah. living with for sin or the other stuff, for example, undermining main authority or you exalt yourself to a to a female pastor, which is absolutely unbiblical. So you actually what what they are doing actually they proclaim to love God, but in reality yes. they hate him. They make their own God and they hate his opinion when it comes to certain things. Right. And then to have the nerve to sing worship songs is 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 yeah. a demonic mockery in my opinion. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me. Back then, I did not even knew that, that you are actually blind. You cannot see. Yeah. And there was one video, for example, when there were some people coming up to you, try to stop you, and, you know, with false love and whatnot. And one of these guys had, like, long hair, and the Bible is clearly saying it is a shame <laughs> for a man to have long hair. And yeah. you turn to him. I mean, you turn to him, and and you said, do you have long hair? You have long hair. Shame on you and stuff like that. <laughs> do you have long hair? I do. So you're not even afraid of God. You don't believe in the words of Paul? That's okay. That's okay. That's okay because Paul said it's a shame for a man to have long hair. But you teach rebellion in this church because you don't fear God, do you? You love your sports and you love your long hair. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. Shame on you. And may the Lord have mercy on you. Okay. You spreading your wickedness. You spreading your rebellion in this church. What kind of an example are you for the youth? No, you're just like the 60s hippie generation. They died and found out you, you were not e even able to see it. Yeah. God is clearly speaking to you. And uh, can you maybe share uh, something like that? Or like to the edification of the body? I believe yeah. that. Wow. Yeah. You know, a lot of times I, I just, I just, you know, start preaching what's in my heart. And it's not until, you know what, we see the video or something that sometimes, I mean, it's not all the time, but, but it has happened where it's like, wow, that was exactly, you were describing exactly what this person looked like. Wow. And uh, it just, yeah, it's, you know, God is just looking for people that are willing, I think. Yeah. You know what, he, he wants people that are willing and there's just not there, that many willing people in the world that uh, that want to do things for God. And and I think that's with me. I just, I wanted to just, I wanted to do something. Yeah. And, and I think the Lord just, uh, he gave me something that I could do. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. I say, thank you, Terry, for doing this, what you're doing. It's very, very good. And I appreciate it very much. And 
uh, all your prayers and the prayers from the family they mean a lot to me and yeah, uh, yeah you are a true brother and a friend that's yes yeah. how i see you thank you my, my you know and it's it's our privilege to pray for others it's our privilege to uh you know when god is using us to cast out demons uh yeah. you know it's it's the greatest privilege of man i believe to be used by the creator yes that's true that's true mm -hmm.